I would like to hear Guruji's turning point in life where he separated himself from his intellect and his inner self. Do I like like someone who lost my intellect? <laughs> I didn't think that I was coming out so dumb <laughs> uh, This is… she's asking for a story. You want a story? Okay. One must understand it's a process that you set forth. This started happening to me when I was just around four, four and a half years of age. I suddenly realized one day that I don't know anything. I don't know anything means I don't know anything at all. To such an extent, if somebody gives me a glass of water, I would not know what is water. I know if I drink this water, it'll quench my thirst and different ways of using it. I know what to do with it, but I don't know what it is. Well, actually, if you look at it, even today, you don't know what it is. It's the only substance present on the planet in all three different states. Three-fourths of the planet is water. Nearly three-fourths of your body is water. If you're looking for life, you look for a drop of water. With a lot of excitement, they found a few drops on the Mars. <laughs> I think people from California need to migrate <laughs> So, I'm just staring on this glass of water for hours on end. If I found a dry leaf, I'm just looking at the leaf for five, six hours at a stretch. If I sit up in my bed, staring at the darkness, the entire night I'm sitting like this staring. My dear father, being a physician, started thinking I need psychiatric evaluation. <laughs> this boy is simply staring at something or the other, unblinking he's staring, he's lost it. My problem is, I look at this one, I still do not know this one. There is no way I'm able to shift my attention to another one. So I… it just held my attention, I couldn't shift. In this condition, they sent me to school. And my mother said, pay attention to the teachers. I went and paid attention to the teachers the kind of attention that they have never received in their life. <laughs> and uh, initially I understood the words that they were speaking and what they were trying to say. After some time I realized, they're just making sounds. I'm making up the meanings in my head. Even now, as I speak, I'm only making sounds you're making up the meanings, isn't it? Because language is a conspiracy between two people. <laughs> if you have a conspiracy, what do you do? The Indians, you speak in your language <laughs> In India, we have this advantage, we have thirteen hundred languages in the country. We can have lots of conspiracies going <laughs> because we'll speak in our own language. Actually, I'm only making sounds, isn't it? You're making up the meanings. So when I realized I'm the one who's making up all the meanings, I stopped making the meanings, then I just heard the sounds with full attention. See, this is the problem with most people. The moment they don't understand, they think they need not pay attention. What you do not understand needs more attention than what you understand, isn't it? So as I watched, teacher after teacher coming in and making noises and noises and noises and going. It became very amusing to me and a huge smile spread on my face. They were not at all amused <laughs> My schooling went like this, very consistent. 
because I, I remember this so well. I don't know if you still have this. You still have those monthly tests and report cards that your parents have to sign and your… you know, your children have to get it to you, stuff like that? So, monthly report cards come. I see in the school, uh, some children are strutting around because they are first or second. Some are sitting and crying because they are afraid to go home with their marks card. Never once in my entire school life did I ever open and see. <laughs> the teachers gave me the card, I took it and gave it to my father. I thought this is a transaction between the two of them <laughs> I had nothing to do with this. Because I was very consistent, I always got six zeros. <laughs> because I always gave an empty paper, if they insisted, I put my name on it. <laughs> Otherwise, I gave an empty paper, as a rule. When the final exam came, I wrote something and went to the next class. Otherwise, all my tests, I got zero, 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 zero. Because uh, million things, you know, I have a billion questions in my mind about everything. There is nobody around who is capable of answering these questions, but they're trying to stuff something else into you, which I'm not interested in. So, school went like this. This is about eight years ago. The school where I studied nearly forty, forty-five years ago, they came to invite me for their one hundred and twenty-fifth anniversary of the school. So the trustees, the third generation of trustees came to invite me. They said, you must come. I said, see, I was not just a not good student. <laughs> I was not even a student. Why me? You know? You call the brilliant students of your school, why me? They said, <laughs> you know, our school has produced union ministers, our school has produced cricketing stars, our school has produced film stars, you are the only mystic, you must come <laughs> So, okay <laughs> So I went there to speak and <laughs> And I went and stood up in the quadrangle, looked around the same oppressive buildings. <laughs> then I suddenly remembered this classroom. I was about thirteen years of age. One afternoon, the teacher is trying to get a response for some question he's asked. I hear the sounds, but I don't hear the words. After some time, I don't even hear the sounds. I don't even see their forms, I just see all kinds of things. I know their past, present and future, but I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> I know his entire life better than him, but I don't know what he's saying. And thirty-five, forty minutes, he desperately tried to get a response from me. But those days I'm made like this, sometimes three days, four days, I don't utter a word, Be not because I'm in silence or something, when you don't know anything, what do you say? This I do not know anything has grown to such a size, it's like, you know, my mind is billions of questions, simply. I have a question mark about everything in the universe and not a single answer. <laughs> so then after thirty-five, forty minutes, he got so frustrated, he came and held me by the shoulders, shook me violently like this. And he said, you must either be the divine or the devil, I think you're the later <laughs> I did not feel abused by this or insulted by this. Till then my problem was, what is this, what is that, what is that, what is that, what is that? One thing was clear to me, this is me. Suddenly this guy confused me about this also. <laughs> Suddenly I looked like this. What am I? Am I divine? Am I devil? What the hell am I? <laughs> he just confused me for the first time. I thought this was clear. <laughs> so I tried to stare at myself, it didn't work, so I closed my eyes. Initially minutes to hours it went on. One day I closed my eyes and sat. I thought I sat there for twenty-five, thirty minutes. When I opened my eyes, there's a huge crowd around me. India being what it is, there are garlands around me, around my neck, people are pulling my legs. 
They want to know, well, somebody wants to know about his business, somebody wants to know when his daughters will get married. I said, what the hell, where did you all come from? They said, you've been sitting here for thirteen days. In my experience, it was only twenty-five, thirty minutes. When I tried to open my legs, my knees were stuck. It took almost an hour and a half putting hot water, massage, everything to get my legs straightened out. Otherwise, even I wouldn't have believed it, but thirteen days had passed. In my experience, it just felt like twenty-five, thirty minutes. And suddenly, what is inside, what is outside, everything got mixed up. Clearly till then, I was very clear, this is me, that's you, all right? I had no issue with that one, but this is me and that is you. Suddenly, uh, this idea of what is me and what is not me got all mixed up because what is me was just everywhere. Now, this looks like a hallucination and that's what I thought. I thought I'm just losing, you know, going off my rocker. I'm just losing my mind. But every cell in my body is bursting with ecstasy. One thing I know is I don't want to lose it. It may be madness, but I don't want to lose it. So right now, my whole effort with life is to just rub off that madness on you. <laughs> you should also know the ecstasy of being alive. Right now, you know the torture of your intellect. You must know the ecstasy of being alive. You… C you are a piece of life, rest is all arrangements, yes or no? Why did you make these arrangements? To enhance your life. No, no, you made these arrangements mainly to enhance this life. You thought with education your life would enhance itself, with money it would enhance itself, with marriage it would enhance itself, with children it would enhance itself. Now you started the question, you know, this… I wanted to come and meditate but my family, my children, da-da-da, as if it's a problem. These are accessories that you added to enhance your life, not to put your life down. Yes? Every arrangement that you made is about enhancing this life, isn't it? If this life could be enhanced from outside, you would have done it. But this is a realization for you that life cannot be enhanced from outside. Arrangements will bring convenience and comfort. It'll take care of things for us around us, but it cannot enhance. If you want to enhance that life, you have to turn inward. If you really care for people who are with you, your family, your children, the foremost thing that you need to do is you have to enhance this. Because what is the damn best thing that you can do to people around you? That you are a wonderful human being. There's nothing better you can do to them. If you had a choice either to live or work with joyful and blissful human beings, or work and live with miserable human beings, what is your choice? Blissful. I want you to please, please, please remember, everybody else is looking forward to the same thing <laughs> You think other people want miserable people? No, please just give them that much, that you're a joyful human being. Thank you very much. I would like to once again acknowledge the Dharma Foundation for the commendable cause that they have taken up. This will be an important step for preserving and nurturing the future generations in a certain way. The significance of this is not to spread another new religion, the significance of this to create a, a religious world but still deeply spiritual world. This is very important. This is very, very important. The divide of religions, you see what it is causing. In the past, it has done terrible things. Still samples of that happening in many parts of the world, what the religious divide can do. Don't think you will be or I will be or our children will be immune to this. Anywhere it can flare up, believe me, anywhere. So this effort is commendable and in whichever way we can support this Isha Foundation and myself, we will uh, put our force behind this. Thank you very much for being here.